Well, hello there. I'm Rick Money. Season five of Riverdale has started, and episode one has lots of fun on prom night. From this point on, I want you to stop. There are major spoilers that I'm about to reveal. If you haven't seen this episode, season five's premiere, episode one, don't go any further. You proceed at your own risk. And you know that can be pretty risky when we're dealing with Riverdale. So, major spoilers. What were the big things that happened on the season premiere of Riverdale? Number one, Mr. Weatherby is back. We haven't seen Waldo Weatherby since Edgar cut off his finger in the farm storyline. Number two, the Archie Betty Veronica Love Triangle. Now, Veronica finds a lovely song. The only problem is that the song she finds in Archie's room isn't for her. It's for Betty. Can you believe this? It is for Betty. And Betty and Archie, in case you all don't know, Betty is going with Jughead. But Betty was sharing kisses with Archie. Not good. And Archie was so affected, he wrote a song. And that is the song that Veronica found. And then Veronica performed that song at her speakeasy while Archie was there. And Archie was feeling all sorts of emotion. He was in some serious, serious turmoil. He was just all up in his feelings for Betty. Now, you have to remember this. Betty and Archie vowed that they would keep this thing secret. And they've obviously kept it secret for a while. But now, everything's bubbling up. And Archie decides to go in there and drop the bombshell on poor Veronica and Veronica on her prom, where she thinks she's one of the best dressed people and she's with her Archie Kins. He goes in there on the dance floor and tells her the news. He spills the beans on the dance floor that he kissed her arch rival and friend at times. Betty. Mm, mm, mm. I wonder if they should have been playing Careless Whisper by Wham. Archie has just ruined the prom for poor Veronica. Prom's ruined. Why would you go in there and tell her on the prom? No, Archie, have some class. Where's your decorum, man? At least wait till you get home next day. You ruined the you know, from now on, every time she thinks about the prom, looks at prom pictures, she's going to be thinking about how she just found out that Archie was kissing on Betty. Mm-mm-mm. Right, cool. The next big shocker, K.O. Kelly, who we last saw on, uh, she was in Queens. He was on the Katie Kane show. He was going with Katie Kane. You know, they were going through it. You know, he declared his undying love for her, but he, you know, had to leave and to pursue his boxing career, which brings him to Riverdale, trying to get a uh, naval scholarship on boxing. Now, this is the same scholarship that good old Archie turned down. You know, so now Archie wanted the scholarship, but Archie being the wishy-washy person that he is, you know, he decides, you know, that he doesn't want it, but now he does want it. His KO also is in town to get that scholarship. So they go in here, set this fight up with Archie versus KO, who is much larger. I guess weight classes just don't matter over in Riverdale. So Archie's talking smack and he's like, you know, I'm so macho. And they go through all this shirtless you know, 
show of machismo and all of that stuff until we get to the actual fight. We get to the fight and uh, that's when it goes down. Archie literally gets the checks beat off his head. And I never thought I would get to say this on a Riverdale show, but Archie was wearing the crimson mask. I usually get to say that on wrestling stuff. But on Riverdale, I can say Archie was wearing the crimson mask. He was beat to a bloody pulp. I mean, don't get me wrong. He got a couple shots in. And it was impressive that he didn't get knocked out by a much larger, you know, uh, K.O. Kelly. So, you know, that's a testament to Archie's skills. But he still got beat down. So, of course, the naval commander goes and art offers the uh, scholarship to K.O., leaving Archie and Riverdale. Now, the naval commander tried to be nice to him. It's like, look, you know, I'll keep you in mind for our scholarships. And Archie, you know, just went caught all the way. He just went all the way, just rude. Just He was just rude and nasty. Turned the man down in a very vicious fashion and told him basically he could take that naval scholarship and shove it right up his candy. You know, you know, he was like, nah. He was cool, and he would never take that scholarship. So that's what was going on with that. And, uh, you know, I encourage you, if you haven't seen it, and you really, you like seeing Archie get beat up, this is your chance. Archie thinks that he got his clock cleaned by KO. Wait till Jughead finds out that he was K-I-S-S-I-N-G on Betty. Jughead's going to whip that behind. Because in case you all don't know, Jughead on Riverdale has like the power of the juggernaut. And he's got knockout power. He can beat everybody up, you know. So Archie is not going to be good for you when Jughead finds out. Of course, that's not the only problem that Archie is going to have. Because Hiram Lodge, that's Veronica's father overheard his baby girl he overheard his baby crying to, his, to her mother because of the fact that Archie did her wrong Archie did her dirty and Hiram is nobody to play with as a matter of fact we get reminded of that earlier in the episode where we see Hiram Lodge who not only is the mayor of Riverdale but he is also like the kingpin, like, you know, like the godfather-like character on that show. And we get footage of him beating the mess out of somebody with brass knuckles. So, Archie, you already know you're in some serious crap. Now, Veronica wasn't the only one left crying on prom night. Cheryl Blossom and Tony Topaz are having the best of times and the worst of times. Cheryl blabs to Tony's grandmother about their relationship. Well, for a long time, we were thinking that the problem was going to be when Cheryl's grandmother found out that, well, not Cheryl's grandmother, please forgive me, that Tony's grandmother was going to have a problem finding out that Tony Topaz was in a lesbian relationship with Cheryl Blossom. But the lesbianism was not the problem for Grandma. The problem is that Cheryl's a blossom. And that family has done, they have done the Topaz family bad for generations. And Grandmom hasn't forgotten. And she's basically told Tony, you got to go in there, break this thing off. They are, in my opinion, they're the best dressed couple on the dance floor that night. They just look so cute together. And I guess Mr. Weber being the rest of the prom committee for it so too because of the fact that Tony and Cheryl, they get voted the queen and queen of the prom. Even after being crowned queen and queen, Tony does not go home with Cheryl because of the fact that she is going to listen to her grandmother and be home by midnight. And it appears as if things may get broken off between Tony and Cheryl, you know, we have to wait and see how this is going to play out. But in the meantime, Cheryl's obviously thinking the worst. And she is just 
just a ball of tears. She's bawling on her grandmother's lap. And it was just terrible. It was so sad. So sad. Kevin. Our man Kevin is back from New York. He was also up in New York on the Katie Kane show. And he's made his return. Betty and Jughead come up with a plot to make a snuff film. So they can get into the screening party slash rave for these illicit films. Now, Betty and Jughead don't find the director when they get into the film, you know, into the uh, rave, but they do find somebody else. They don't find the director, but they find Jughead's little sister Jellybean at the rave. So what the Easter egg candy is Jelly Bean doing at a rave? Isn't it past her bedtime? Isn't there some sort of curfew? What in the world is going on here? Oh, and I forgot to mention, in the making of the snuff film that did not get used, we get to see Reggie dressed like the gimp from Pulp Fiction and Cheryl She's dressed like Wanda from WandaVision in the 1950s first episode. Oh, but you know what? That's another review for another time. That fake snuff film doesn't, by the way, get them the entry. What gets them the golden ticket is when Betty goes and pulls out footage of her father in his young psychotic days on his journey to becoming a mass murderer. And that gets the person who is the curator of this movie series. It warms his heart and it gets them entry into this rave, which by the way, seemed like it was totally insane. And I'm still trying to wrap my head around why in the world was Jelly Bean there? Uh, some random notes. Did you all notice that Reggie spiked the punch at the prom? Where was the security at? Now, they've been spiking punches at the prom probably since the 1940s. Where was the security at? How come nobody's guarding the punch? Jughead wore his beanie to the prom. And I really, I realized that Rick Money needs a beanie. I would love to be wearing a beanie. Well, obviously, I'm not going to my prom, but I will wear it somewhere else, you know. You know, maybe on the bus, on the train, you know, to a fashion show. I can see myself rocking that beanie. Only in Riverdale can the last dance break out into a rave as some fiend spikes the punch and some fiend goes in there. But well, we know the fiend though, in that case is Reggie. And then another fiend goes and puts up the video of people in mass, masked with the face of all of their classmates or in this case, from our point of view, the castmates, they're wearing the mask of Betty and Veronica and Reggie and everybody murdering somebody who's tied up. And the dance goes on, the music plays, people are jamming to it until Betty pulls the plug. Only in Riverdale can people still dance as video of somebody apparently getting murdered is going on. Mm, mm, mm. We get a shot of Betty and Jughead going into a room and they see a camera recording. And the recording has a sign on it. Well, the camera has a sign on it saying, smile, God is watching. Well, my message is to Archie, who has lots to worry about because he's received the tape of the Riverdale Mass Murdering Club wearing those Riverdale masks. And he better remember, not only is God watching, but so is Hiram Lodge. I'm Rick Money. This is the Riverdale Report. Can't wait for episode two. Peace.